Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the electrophilic aromatic substitution in multi-substituted aromatic compounds and planning the multi-step synthesis of aromatic compounds as well. So let's start by looking at this compound and this reaction over here. As our molecule is not symmetrical, there are four possible places where we can perform the substitution. This gives us four possible products. Now the question is, which one is going to be our major product? And to answer that question, you'd probably need to draw the resonance structures for all the intermediates or our sigma complexes and go from there. But what if I told you that no, you don't actually need to do that? What if I told you that you can tell the major product and skip the tedious resonance? Like in this case, the isomer C is going to be my major product, and I could figure it out by doing a very simple analysis of the starting material. Okay, enough of the suspense. There is a very simple shortcut. Let's start by looking at an aromatic compound with an electron donating group, or EDG. The electron donating groups are activating groups and they bring the extra electron density to the ring. Specifically, they make the orthopair positions more electron rich. I'll remind you that the orthopair positions are these, so these are the ortho position, and the para position is right over there. Thus, the electrophile is going to be more likely to attack those positions. And we also know that in the cases of the orthopara directors, the para position is typically favored. So if this position is available, we are going to attack at that position. In the case of the electron withdrawing groups, the EWGs, we have the opposite picture. The electron withdrawing group will pull the electron density out of the ring, making it more positive. The electron withdrawing groups will put the partial positive charge on the orthopara position, essentially deactivating them. Thus, the electrophile will be less likely to attack those positions. I personally really don't like the term meta-director. Unlike the donating groups, which make the orthopara positions more attractive for the electrophiles, the electron withdrawing groups are actually not directing the substitution into the meta position. The deactivating groups make the orthopara positions less attractive for electrophiles instead. The meta position is nothing more but essentially a leftover that was not deactivated. So I prefer to think about that as the activating groups are the orthopara activators while the deactivating groups are the orthopara deactivators. So it's always going to be about the orthopara positions and pretty much never about the meta position. Meta position is just a leftover. So for instance, let's look at this example. If we analyze it from the perspective of the orthopara activating and deactivating effects, we'll see that the methoxy group, which I have in green, is the activating group. Thus, it's going to activate its own orthopara positions. At the same time, the nitro group, which I have here in pink, is the deactivating group. So it's going to be deactivating its own orthopara positions. And I want to point out here that whenever we are doing this analysis, it's extremely important to pay attention that each group has its own orthopara positions. There is no such a thing as the universal ortho and para position in aromatic ring, and each group has its own ortho and para positions. So, like this methoxy group has the ortho positions right over here and the para position right down there. In the case of the nitro group that I have over here, while it has its own ortho positions here and here, and it has its own para position, which is going to be across from it down there. So always do a relative order pair of positions and don't think that there are absolute ones. I like to use the arrows and crosses in my molecule. This helps me to easily map the possible substitution positions in my compound. So here I have a couple of positions that are likely candidates for the substitution and a couple of positions that are not. This analysis gives us two possible products, and as we know, the para product is typically the one that forms in a larger quantity due to the steric factors. So we'll assign the major product to the first molecule here. And here is another example. By doing the same analysis as above, I can quickly map the activated positions. Those are going to be the positions that are the orthopara to my activating group. Notice that here I only pay attention to the first atom attached to my ring as it exhibits the most influence. So the green CH2 group that I have over here, that is my weakly activating and electron donating group. And it doesn't really matter that few atoms further 
further down the line we have that carbonyl because that carbonyl is a little bit too far to make any difference so essentially I don't care anything beyond the first group uh, or the first group of atoms rather I should say that are directly connected to my aromatic ring Likewise, in this case, I have the pink carbonyl that I'll treat as the moderately deactivating group. And again, the fact that it's later connected to other stuff is pretty much irrelevant for me. So I can quickly map the deactivated positions and proceed with drawing of my products. And here again, due to the steric factors, I'll choose the molecule to the right as my major product. Now, in those examples, my groups were always playing along just fine. We haven't seen any conflicts or ambiguity so far. This is of course not going to be the case every single time. So what happens when the groups fight with each other? Like for instance in this reaction where I have a weakly activating group activating its own order positions and I also have a strongly activating group which activates its own order positions. So what are we going to do in this case? Draw the resonance to help us decide? Oh, hell no, that takes way too much time. Luckily, we can just remember that the stronger activating group will typically overpower the weaker activating group. And don't just discount the sterics yet. If your strongest activating group is very bulky, then attacking the order position next to it may be very difficult. But for as long as we don't have anything extreme, and typically you are not going to see anything extreme, the electronic effects will be more important. So in this case, the major product will be the one where we add a new group to the order position to the strongest activating group, which is in our case is going to be this dimethyl amino group over here. We can also have a situation in which we have a conflict between the activating group and a deactivating group that affect the same positions in the molecule. In cases like this one, typically the activating group overpowers the deactivating group. So the substitution is going to go into one of the positions that the activating group is directing us to. But predicting the product in cases like that can be a little bit more challenging. One thing that we can say for sure is that the substitution is unlikely to occur between the groups due to the steric hindrance. So we are really not likely to put anything down here. But which one of the two other products is going to be the major? The substitution over here or the substitution over there. And of course I already have the spoiler over here, but nonetheless. You see, the different textbooks have slightly different criteria for cases like that. Some prioritize the para position to the donating group making the molecule to the right the major product. Some prioritize the distance from the electron withdrawing group, the further the better, making the left molecule as the major product. And the experimental evidence suggests that the former is actually more important in the case of strongly activating groups, like let's say methoxide or nitrogen containing groups and stuff like that, and the latter is more important for the weakly activating groups, like let's say methyl group or other alkyls. So I'll leave that with you and your instructor since, well, at the end of the day, it is them who is going to be giving your grade. But personally, I will side with the experimental evidence and I will say that my product to the right, that is my major product. Now, Remember that I've mentioned earlier that it's a good idea to think about the meta directors as the orta para deactivators instead, right? Well, that's because the molecule can be completely deactivated, like for instance in this case. Here I have the pink nitro group deactivating its own positions, and I have the blue nitro group deactivating its own positions. So as the result, the entire molecule is so deactivated that for all intents and purposes, it is too unreactive in the electrophilic aromatic substitution. And it doesn't mean that the reaction is entirely impossible. No, it's quite possible. But remember that deactivating groups make reaction go slow. So when the entire molecule is deactivated, the reaction is going to be so slow that for any practical purposes it's not going to be feasible at all. Now, when we know how to quickly approach the directing effects in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, let's talk about the multi-step synthesis. And here I have a typical exam question. When it comes to questions like that, I suggest you first map out the groups that you are going to be adding to your compound and the reactions that you will need to know to add them. In this case, we are going to be adding a halogen, 
which is a chlorine in this case, and this can be done via a simple halogenation reaction, so something like Cl2 and iron chloride, or maybe aluminum chloride, something of that sort. We're also going to be adding a ketone via the Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction. When I'm doing this type of analysis, I'm also noticing the nature of my groups and whether they are activating or deactivating groups. This part is very important for planning out your synthesis. And here is why. If I don't pay attention to the directing effects of my groups and, for instance, do the halogenation first, I'll end up with the weakly deactivating but the ortopera directing group on my ring first. This means that I'll end up with the wrong product after my friedel crafts acylation reaction. However, if I perform my steps in the reverse order, I'll first have the meta-directing group on the ring. This means that my halogenation going to add the chlorine atom to the meta position where we actually want it to be. And at the beginning, the multi-step synthesis is going to be a bit of a trial and error for you. But that's okay. For as long as you have all the important pieces mapped out, you'd be able to quickly go through the options and see which sequence gives you the correct product. With a little practice, you'll see that you'll be able to map the sequence in your head and solve these questions much easier and faster. So, as I always say, do a ton of practice. So, do you want me to put together a video where I solve a bunch of these types of synthesis questions? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any future tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video!